Everybody's got their own choices to make in life. Hello friends, my name is Brandon Dayton, I'm your humble narrator, welcome back. Today, we're going to talk about humble choice. Yes, I don't know if you're privy to the, the bundles and whatnot, but you can get a bunch of pretty good games for an extremely low price, and I really enjoy bundles, so we might start start covering some bundles on the channel and just see what the games are all about and stuff like that, if they're worth buying. The thing that brought my eye to this humble choice of this month is the fact that there are 12 games instead of 10 games. So people are being forced to make a choice in a bundle called Humble Choice, which is just shocking, obviously. People people don't seem able to handle it. Let's let's take a look at this graph, infographic, that shows you why that might, you know, uh, miff some people. So you've got the light plan, no games every month, uh, you get a slight discount. I don't know why anybody would go for the light plan. Uh, the basic plan, you get three games every month. Premium gives you nine games every month. Classic will give you ten games for only $12 a month as compared to the $20 a month for the nine games a month, right? Uh, or 15 a month for three games a month, which I don't know why you do that either. You're either going to be going for premium or classic if you love gaming, right? Uh, but with this release, they they brought out 12 games instead of 10. The, the first humble choice came out in December and yeah people people seem to enjoy it because you got all 10 games that were in the bundle if you were on the classic plan obviously classic plan looks like the best choice but you have to be grandfathered in from the monthly bundles which they used to do humble monthly they canceled it for humble choice uh, so that's the only way that you could end up getting on the classic plan if you are going to go for the premium plan uh, check out my link in the description for for me to get some extra gaming money, that would be really nice of you. If you don't want to do Humble, that's that's fine too. I don't blame you. Probably if, if I wasn't grandfathered into the classic plan, if they had just gotten rid of the $12 a month completely, then I would have uh, I would have stepped away from Humble and been like, okay guys, thanks anyways. Let's look at the 12 games that they've offered this month. A very eclectic mix here. A very eclectic mix indeed. We have Shadow of War, Graveyard Keeper, Two Point Hospital, Dirt Rally 2.0, Street Fighter V, Bad North, Trailmakers, Unrailed, Whispers of Machine, Them Fighting Herds, Mages of Mistralia, and Grip Combat Racing. If you don't know anything about these games, that's okay. We're going to show off some, some footage, and maybe you can pass your judgment that way. So, first up is Shadow of War. If you enjoyed Shadow of Mordor, then it's basically that. Plus, <laughs> Shadow War is a really, really cool game if you're into medieval fantasy and bashing orcs apart and stuff like that. And uh, it's got this really cool nemesis system. So, like, if an orc ends up killing you, they get promoted and they become kind of, well, your nemesis. And then you have to go chase them down and uh, fight them as, as one of the quote-unquote bosses in the game. So I think it's really cool that a lower-level enemy can be promoted to a boss, and that is... That is the most magical thing about the Shadow of War, Shadow of Mordor games. I'd been watching this one for a while. It was actually on my wish list, and I was looking at it during the winter sale, and I'm like, ah, fuck, I, mm, maybe, no, not yet. <laughs> I got a lot of other stuff to pay for. We'll just, we'll just wait on it, and I'm so fucking glad I waited on it, because here it is. It just dropped in my lap, and I'm like, oh, well, thank you. <laughs> So I'll be playing this one for sure. This is probably one of the highlights of the entire bundle, at least in my opinion. Obviously, it depends on your taste, but if you are into hack and slash medieval fantasy, I would definitely suggest picking up Shadow of War because it is a great, great game. Next game on the list is Graveyard Keeper. It's been compared a lot to Stardew Valley with dead people, which sounds really interesting to me. Graveyard Keeper looks pretty good. If you enjoy this sort of thing, uh, creating your own little garden and maintaining it and whatnot. And of course, digging up dead bodies and burying dead bodies, which I assume is part of the, the graveyard part of Graveyard Keeper. Yes, yes? Yes, yes. You can do some mining, you can do some fighting monsters, you can do some farming, and of course, you can, you can play with dead bodies. You also face some uh, ethical dilemmas in the game, stuff like that. It's like... Do you want to spend some of your, your hard-earned money on burger meat, or do you just want to uh, dig up one of one of these volunteers that you have lying around? So, 
Graveyard Keeper, pretty cool game. Uh, Stardew Valley with a, a bit of edge to it, which I, I think I can dig. I can get behind that. I'll be, I'll be giving this one a spin quite soon. Third game up, I guess one of the the highlights in this bundle would be Two Point Hospital. I've heard a lot of people talking about Two Point Hospital. If you enjoy simulation games, this will probably be right up your alley. You basically run a hospital um, for profit, of course. You get a bunch of general practitioners and try and treat people as best you can. And sometimes you don't have the resources to treat them, so you've got to get some more money so you can buy said said machines. You know, everybody needs an MRI machine, right? Put some vending machines, of course, in the uh, the waiting rooms, and and you can reap the benefits of people buying snacks and whatnot because people always eat when they're bored, don't they? I know I do. <laughs> it's a pretty decent looking game. I'd say it's a bit too cartoony to really be like hardcore simulation game, but it does have some appeal at least. So yeah, if you're into simulation games, give Two Point Hospital a shot. You really can't lose for a buck twenty. It does have a lot of uh, DLC and stuff, which is not included in the bundle. But I'm not, I'm not crazy about DLC. A lot of people are complaining about Shadow of War because they're like, oh, they didn't include all the DLC. But it's like, well, if you really like the game, then you got it for a buck twenty. Then, then just throw the, the the developers a few more bucks. I don't think it's a game that I would play myself, but I did end up picking it up. So. Who knows? At, at least I have the option. The option's available to me, but there are a lot of simulation games that I would prefer to play. The game is pretty popular, so consider picking it up if it looks like something that would appeal to you. Fourth game is quite a nice option for racing fans out there. It is Dirt Rally 2.0. Consider the dark souls of fucking racing rally games. It is really, really hard. I've played... Uh, Dirt, I think it's Dirt 2 or 3, maybe both, but yeah, I found it extremely difficult to play uh, because I'm not really a rally car sort of guy. I like a stupid racing game that I can just sit down and succeed at, and Dirt Rally is not that at all. Uh, this one does come with some DLC, but there is a lot more DLC to buy if you do enjoy the game, which, as I said, doesn't bother me too much. I know a lot of people are complaining, but I think that's just because... People like to complain. The game itself looks fucking amazing. There's, you know, the dirt effects on the track. You can get some some nice weather and rain, and uh, even nighttime looks really, really nice. So I think Dirt Rally, if you're if you're looking at it at least from a graphical standpoint, it looks like something that everybody can enjoy. But once you sit down and actually try and play the game, it's going to put you through your paces. So if you if you enjoy racing games, then yeah, go ahead, take the leap pick it up, but if if you're new to the genre, if you just like games that are a, a bit more simple to play, uh, you know, just mash the gas and no shifting and <laughs> you don't have to worry about all that, then this might not be the game for you. The other racing game is Grip, which is more like combat focused and a bit easier to play, but yeah, Dirt Rally is, is super hard as far as the controls and shit go, but it still looks really, really pretty, so I gotta give it that. Next game up, Street Fighter V. My goodness, they had they had so many good games. What the fuck is this? Um, I'm gonna recommend like all of these games basically. Uh, the only stipulation is like if you don't like a certain genre. So if you don't like fighting games, you're probably not gonna dig on Street Fighter V. But Street Fighter V looks absolutely delicious. As is the case with many of the games in this list, this game does not offer any of the DLC that is attached to it. You can easily upgrade to the Championship Edition for about $25, but as it is, you know, probably just try it out, see if it's the fighting game for you, which it might not be. Um, I know Street Fighter V had a pretty l rough launch, but things seem to be smoothed out now. The $25 in DLC will get you 24 additional characters, but you start with 16, I think, so even that's enough to, to test out the game and see how you like it at the very least. I'll try it out a little, probably play through the story mode a bit, and then go, okay, uh, let's try online, and I'll get my ass kicked <laughs> a few times and be like, well, this ain't for me, because I don't... I don't generally practice in fighting games as hardcore as a lot of people should. I kind of want to jump in and be able to enjoy it despite uh, my relative lack of skill. 
but of course you're you're gonna get smashed up by people with hundreds of hours, which is the case in a lot of games for me. Rainbow Six Siege, stuff like that. But when I get when I get shot in a video game, it's it's much easier to to stomach than having somebody beat my ass for minutes at a time. As I said, you might be able to find the Championship Edition cheaper on sale somewhere else. So if that's definitely the one you are going for, then I'd suggest skipping on this one. If, if you know what you're looking for, but as for somebody like me who doesn't really keep up with the, the modern Street Fighter games, it's it's maybe one that you should throw in. Like I said, for a buck twenty, come on, you can't you can't lose. The next selection is the one that was offered in the Epic Game Store, so it is the one that I've skipped because I've already got it in another game library, which is just fine with me. It's kind of a strategy roguelike game, which seems like a bit of a misnomer. Uh, usually roguelikes are a bit more action-oriented, and Bad North has a bit of action to it, but if your strategy's on point, you can you can beat it in relatively short order, and the roguelike aspect to it won't even come into play. Uh, the gameplay is a little bit simple, sort of like a, a rock, paper, scissors style, you know, it doesn't have a whole lot of depth to it aside from, okay, rock, paper, scissors, and your positioning, and those are the two aspects that you have to manage, which makes Bad North relatively simple to beat. Uh, I sat down, smashed my way through the hard mode in just under three hours, which for the price tag of a buck twenty, okay, I can dig it. But for uh, the retail price, my God, that is that is severely lacking some content. Uh, it's a nice indie game, but a bit too simple for my taste. Uh, as far as when I'm looking at a strategy game, and that is the niche that it is trying to fill, I suppose, uh, as a strategy game, an indie strategy game. But there are better done ones out there, so probably maybe give this one a skip, just like I did. I don't know. Up to you. Trailmakers is the next game on the list. It's basically Lego cars. You like Legos? You like cars? You can build a Lego car, complete a series of tasks. Um, I think that they also have like some flight capability as well. I did end up picking it up even before it appeared here, basically because the 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 building aspect seemed really cool to me, and it is super deep. Um, change out your shocks, change out your your body, add more engines. It's really, really nice to play around with. Uh, it reminds me sort of of uh, Besieged, except you've got an entire sandbox. You don't have to get rid of your creations after just playing one level, which is really, really nice to me. The problem when it comes to Trailmakers is the fact that it's trying to do a lot of things at once. It's trying to be like a multiplayer racing game, uh, a building game, and exploration game all at the same time. The building is fantastic, the racing needs some help, the exploration is relatively basic. Um, if you have Homebrew, I think that's the other vehicle building sandbox game. Homebrew is slightly better in my opinion um, than Trailmakers, but if you don't have Homebrew then I'd suggest snagging this one if it looks like something that you, you could get into. Unrailed. Speaking of multiplayer games, this is a, a multiplayer game where you basically team up with friends to build a train track and you'll have people trying to disrupt your building experience so they can build their train track longer. And it seems like pretty decent. Uh, obviously there is a time aspect. You're like, okay, we got to build this track faster than the train is chugging down it. And um, yeah, the, the PvP component probably will appeal to some people. If you're not into PvP or multiplayer games, then obviously give this one a skip because that is all that it consists of, PvP and multiplayer. I, I can't say that it's a bad game. Um, it definitely looks like it's fun, but it is for a certain type of audience, and if you don't fall within that certain type of audience, then you're, you're definitely going to want to give it a skip. But the low the low poly kind of style is really appealing to me for some reason it's basically like if pixel pixel graphics came to life unrailed is a relatively interesting idea and it's executed pretty well i suggest snagging it if if it looks like something that would appeal to you but i know that the uh the genre is a bit more niche than a lot of the other games on this list um if you don't enjoy the the multiplayer and pvp then yeah Easy skip, but that's your call.
Whispers of a Machine is up next. It is a point-and-click detective sort of adventure game. Basically, do your little detective thing, walk around, click some stuff. The problem with point-and-click games is um, just the mouse controls. I really don't like games that only control with the mouse. It. I've got so many buttons here in front of me. None of them are utilized, which is just crazy. You're like sorting through your inventory with the mouse and trying to combine shit with the mouse. And I generally find myself more frustrated by point and click games than any other game out there, including puzzle games. The title itself kind of reminds me of I Have No Mouth and I Must Scream, but I don't know how much the plot uh, lines up with that. I'd assume pretty closely uh, from the little bit that I've watched of it, but honestly, it it's not a game that I'll probably end up booting up even though I do have it. It's going to be a relic of my library that maybe sometime down the road one of my kids will click on it after I'm dead and be like, wow, dad had a shitty taste in video games. But yeah, I'm not I'm not trying to talk down. If this is if this is your your genre, I know a lot of people do enjoy it. So, I'm glad because there's so much that can be done with video games and um yeah, this is just another one of those things. Another fighting title, this time with absolutely no DLC to be unlocked. This is Them's Fightin' Herds. Hey guys, I heard you like ponies. How would you like to have ponies beat the shit out of each other? <laughs> I wouldn't think that uh, a four-legged fighter would work, but it's actually surprising how well it does here. I decided to give this one uh, a spin, and it was relatively okay. I played as three of the six characters. They all have a a nice different sort of fighting style and I think it's it's super cool what they're doing here uh, the animation is kinda silly I really enjoy that quite a bit um, but yeah it feels it feels a bit clunky at sometimes uh, the net code is kind of not not ideal uh, but you can adjust for latency when you start a multiplayer match which I think is a really really good idea it's a relatively short amount of content unless you really do enjoy fighting games and stuff like that, which I suppose I do, but not more than other options like crafting survival or roguelikes. Those are my absolute shit. Fighting games are just like a happy diversion, and that's exactly what this was. I, I played it for 40 minutes or something like that, and then it started to feel a bit tired even though I hadn't played all the characters, so... It's not for everybody, uh, especially if you're not into ponies. You might give this one a skip. But, uh, yeah, there's there's some charm to it, you know? It, it's an interesting concept, and it's executed relatively well, so do consider it. Second to the last game on the list is Mages of Mistralia. You know, you might know that I have uh, a hard-on for wizards. Just a big wet one for wizards. Um, and this game features a spell crafting system, which is similar to what attracted me so much in Oblivion. You know, you put the, the burden spell and the fire spell together, and then the guy can't do anything. He just, like, stands there and burns to death because he's overweighted. Ah, oh, yes. Um, so yeah, you can craft your own spells in Mages of Mistralia as you go through your, your little adventure. And it is a little adventure. The, the... The story is relatively short um, from what I'm seeing, but if you can craft your own spells, think of just how many different ways you could play it. I would say that this game would probably get a lot more oomph out of me than something like Bad North, which is yeah the other example I had of a game that was really short in this bundle. Um, so yeah, if you like wizards, if you like wizarding adventures, then check out Mages of Australia, man. I, I can't wait to hop in and craft my own spells. Seems really, really cool. Obviously, if you don't enjoy uh, mages and adventuring as much as I do, then this will be an easy skip for you. If you're into it, I would suggest snagging it. You'll get your money sorted. That heavy buck 20 that you dropped on it. <laughs> oh, that's good stuff, though. Last game on the list is Grip Combat Racing. You get a bunch of weapons and stuff like that. You can decimate your opponents. I should say Twisted Metal. Twisted Metal meets Mario Kart, and then in kind of a Mad Max universe. But yeah, it's really, really awesome. Um, I don't particularly enjoy racing games, but this is one that I can get behind. 
I played Diddy Kong Racing and Mario Kart a lot as as a youngin, and uh, this is kind of that, but with a a new mature paint job. And you have to say it like that because <laughs> that's how it sounds the coolest movie guy voice. You came first. Oh, that means you have to eat the ookie cookie. No, wait, that's not how it works. God, I think I'm starting to lose it. If you enjoy combat racing in any shape or form, this is probably a good one. You can flip upside down, your car keeps going no matter what, and uh, yeah, smash people with missiles and bombs, which <laughs> I miss Twisted Metal as a franchise, and this this is sort of a callback to that, although more, more Mario Kart, more leaning towards Mario Kart. Twisted Metal was kind of like an arena bit. But I digress. If you if you have some friends you want to compete with, this is a good one to pick up. Even if you just want to beat up some bots or some dudes online, this one's a good one to pick up. I know people who don't enjoy racing as much will probably give this one a skip, and that's just fine as well. Let's go back to looking at the uh, the whole shebanga bang. So overall, a really really strong presentation, at least in my opinion, which is something that I expected, obviously. Humble Monthly didn't unveil most of their games until the very, very end of the month, which means they could just shove whatever shit they wanted into it. Humble Choice is like, okay, it's all presented up front, and um, that basically forces them to load in games that are of a higher quality than m maybe normally they would be. I do sincerely believe that there is something for everyone here. Obviously, if you're if you're a completionist, if you can't play a game without the DLC, then you're gonna want to skip Shadow of War, Street Fighter, Dirt 2.0, uh, Two Point Hospital. Those all have DLC attached to them that is not included in this bundle. There's probably even more than that. Um, I think Grip also has some DLC to it as well. But if you don't care, if you just want a taste of the game, then then go buy your your intuition. You know your tastes. What you like in a bundle. I think it's really, really nice that we were forced to choose. Let's say, for instance, that I did not have any of these games, then I would probably end up skipping on Whispers of a Machine and them fighting herds. Everybody's got their own choices to make in life. So, Shadow War if you like the Hack and Slash, Graveyard Keeper if you want an edgy Stardew Valley, Two Point Hospital if you like them, Money Making Building Sims, Dirt Rally. Only Dirt Rally if you really fucking like racing sims, because it is hard. <laughs> Street Fighter V, uh, yeah, it's a fighting game. Do you like Street Fighter? You, you, get, you guys know Street Fighter, come on. Bad North for that, like, roguelike strategy, which is an interesting combination that doesn't really work in my opinion. Trail Makers for the building, crafting, exploration. Unrailed! Avoid it if you don't like that uh, PvP multiplayer gaming aspect. Whispers of a Machine, point and click. Bleh, I would probably skip it. <laughs> Uh, them fighting herds. Do you like ponies? If you don't like ponies, you're probably not gonna like this game. It is it is a decent fighter, but the, the real draw to it is the aesthetic and obviously being a fighting game, beating up other people online. Mages of Australia. Oh my god, craft spells, dude. Go on an adventure. Be a wizard. Fucking amazing. Uh, grip. You know, combat racing. Are you into combat racing? Can you? Does it sound like something you'd enjoy? If, if that's the case, pick up Grip. If not, then avoid it completely. Super easy choices, at least in my opinion. I can only go from, from my perspective, but I really am quite frustrated by people who are like, Oh no, there's I didn't get all the games in the bundle. It's only 10, 10 picks and 12 games. It's like, dude, you don't need everything. You're not going to play all of this. I'll put it to you like this. A game that is not played, that is just money that you wasted. You know, at least you have a, a large game library. I have a fucking huge game library. But I will admit to myself that there is a lot of fucking wasted money in there. <laughs> there are thousands of games that I have not booted up. You know, you don't need them all. Do make your choice and uh, don't begrudge hum Humble Bundle for not shoving absolutely every piece of DLC into all the games that have DLC available. Because if you're expecting to get an entire game unlocked, an entire game that some people paid $60 for, and, and plus the DLC on top of that, and uh, you're expecting to get absolutely all of it for a buck twenty, it comes off as a little, a little cheap, if you want me to be honest, you know? 
try out the game. If you really like it, throw some more money at it. It deserves it, you know? It's it's less than the cost of a movie ticket, honestly, for most of the DLC. And uh, if you've spent more than a couple hours on it, then it's, it's outweighed its worth more than a movie, right? Not that, you know, going to a theater and watching a movie is a great investment of money anyways, but people still seem to do it. So that's the comparison that I'm going to make. Anyways, I probably rambled quite enough. I've given you guys a good idea of what to uh, what to grab if you're gonna grab anything. If you're not subscribed to Humble, then obviously this video doesn't apply to you. If you are going to subscribe to Humble, if this video has changed your mind, then don't hesitate to visit that link down in the description. You'll give me a few more dollar dues to throw at video games, which is always uh, a positive in my book, and I do appreciate that. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. Don't forget to let me know in the comments what you would exclude, what what your personal tastes are. But thank you guys once again. I hope that you'll like, comment, and or subscribe if you did enjoy the video. Check out the links in the description to Twitter, Discord, Patreon, also my Humble Bundle, <laughs> if you're into it. Big shout out to Nigo the Legend as well for supporting on the Patreon. That boy, the most stalwart ally of mine. Uh, we're probably going to be doing some collab stuff tomorrow, so I'll record that. Get that up on the channel next. You guys can look forward to it. We're doing big things over here. Friends, this has been Humble Choice. I've been Brandon Dayton, your humble narrator. I shall see you in the next one. And until then, friends. Bye-bye. One, two, three, four. Goodbye, goodbye, see you. I don't call myself Humble Narrator as a reference to Humble Choice. It's uh, it's a Clockwork Orange reference. <laughs>